All right, so I'm very excited to bring this demonstration about how to use configurations in SOLIDWORKS because it deals with Legos. And I really like Legos, been playing with them for a number of years. And so if you have any experience with Legos, you'll notice, you'll know that the only difference between a four post Lego and a six post Lego is the number of posts on the top and on the bottom and the length. So for instance, here's a couple of drawings of Legos. So our four post Lego and our six post Lego. The only thing that changes is 31.8 is now 47.8. We've got six posts on the top, five posts on the bottom, compared to four posts on top and three posts on the bottom. So our first step with, <clears throat> with configurations is modeling the part in such a way that you can make a simple change and it updates everything else. So we're going to model this part in a way that we can directly edit the length, the number of posts on the top, and the number of posts on the bottom. So this is what that's going to look like. So we're going to click on new. We're just going to open up a new part. And come in here, sketch tab, click on the sketch icon, open a sketch on the front plane, do a center rectangle, the center at the origin. And I'm going to make this 9.6 millimeters by 31.8 millimeters. And then I'm going to extrude that using my mid plane option. And I'm going to extrude it 7.8 millimeters. Okay. Now that I've got that all set up, now I'm going to go ahead and shell it. So I will shell it to a thickness of 1.6 millimeters. I'll orbit around to the bottom. I want to take that bottom face off. Now I'm left with just this little box that has no middle to it. Now I can start adding these posts to the top of it. So I'll click on sketch, my sketch icon. I'm going to open a sketch on this top face. I'm going to draw my circle in there. This circle is going to be a diameter of 4.8 millimeters. It is 3.9 millimeters off of this edge. And it is lined up with the origin. So I'll hold down control while I select the center point and the origin and make those two horizontal. My sketch is fully defined, so I can extrude this. And I'm going to extrude this to a height of 1.8. So I've got that. Now it's time to make a pattern of it. So I'll click on Linear Pattern. For my direction, I'll select this horizontal edge. For my spacing, it's going to be 8 millimeters in between posts. I'm going to have a total of four posts on this configuration. And then just come down to Features and Faces, click in the box for Features, select that little post. My preview looks good. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And now orbit around to the bottom. I'm going to click on my Sketch tab, click on the Sketch icon, open a sketch on this bottom inside face. I'm going to draw another circle there. This one's going to have a diameter of three. And it's going to be a distance. And it's a distance of 7.95 millimeters from that edge. And then again, hold down control, select the center point, select the origin, line those two up horizontally. I've got another fully defined sketch, so I'm ready to extrude it. And for this one, I'm going to use the up to surface option and then select this bottom face. Hit my green check mark to accept it. Now I can make a pattern of it, so select linear pattern, select my same edge as before for my direction. Distance between is going to be 7.95. For this one, I'm going to have a total of three of them. And then scroll down, click in the features box, select that extrusion. I get a good preview, hit the green check mark, and that is my Lego. So I'll go ahead and save it. And now it's time to start setting this model up so I can work with configurations. So I was mentioning earlier how the only thing that changes is the number of posts on the top, number of posts on the bottom, and the length. So we want to set it up to work with it that way. So over here on the design tree, I'm going to right click on annotations and choose show feature dimensions. Now all my dimensions show up. I also want to come to my eyeball in my heads up toolbar, click on the little arrow, come down here and click on this D1. 
so it shows the dimension names. I'm going to rename a couple of these dimensions just so that they're easier to work with. Okay. So once you've selected view dimension name, just click anywhere in your graphics area. And now we just have to find these dimensions to be able to rename them. So everything's going to be driven off of these top posts. So I need to find that linear pattern that I created. And I know I'm looking for a four. So when I find that four, I'm going to left click and just drag it out here in kind of open space somewhere. And then when I let go over here, I'll have the properties for that dimension. And under primary value, I'm just going to type in number of posts for the name of that dimension. So I'll type it in, hit my green check mark. Now the name of that dimension is number of posts. I also need to find the three that goes with the, uh, the bottom posts. So let me look around in here. I have to rearrange a couple of these dimensions so that I can find it. But I'm just clicking and dragging them around a little bit. Let me rotate around the bottom. that's the spacing on that pattern and right there it is so I finally found it so I'm going to click on it just drag it off over here to the side and then same thing with it I want to rename this to be number of inside posts and then the last one that I'm going to rename is this 31.8 so I'm going to go ahead and click on it, just drag it around a little bit, and when you let go of it, you'll get the properties for that dimension, and I'm just going to type in length for the name of that, and hit the green check mark. All right, now just go ahead and hit escape a couple times, and now it's time to start setting this up. So first off, for number of inside posts, if you go ahead and find it, the number of inside posts is always going to be one less than the number of our top posts. So I'm going to double click on the value for number of inside posts. And I'm going to type in equals and then click on the dimension value for number of posts. And then type a minus one. And after you do that, go ahead and hit the green check mark. And you'll see that there's a little red E that illustrates that that dimension is being driven by an equation. So if I change the number of posts, number of inside posts is going to change as well. And then the other thing we need to change is the length. So I'll do the same thing. I'll double click on the dimension value. And so this equation is going to be a little longer, but this length is going to equal. So I'll type equals. It's going to equal two times this 3.9 value. So I'll go ahead and click directly on that dimension and then type an asterisk two. So it's going to be two times that plus it's going to be the number of posts times the spacing, which is eight. So I'll type an asterisk and then click directly on that dimension that's driving the spacing in between these posts. And then I need to make one little modification to this because I've got four posts, but there's only three spaces. So I'm going to click in here in between the plus and that first double quote, and I'm going to insert an open parenthesis. Then I'm going to come over here to the other end and in between the double quote and the asterisk I'm going to type a minus one and then a close parenthesis. So that's going to take number of posts minus one and then take it times my spacing. So let's go ahead and hit the green check mark there and now that number stayed the same so my equation must be correct. So now this is all set up and we are ready for configurations. So I'm just going to click on my isometric view. I'm going to go over here to my design tree, right click on annotations and uncheck the show feature dimensions. It just cleans my model up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And almost always when it asks me to rebuild, I'm going to do rebuild and save. And now I can start working with configurations. So this third tab 
over here on the left. That's our configuration manager. So I'll click on it. First thing, I'm going to click on default. I'm going to pause and then click again. And I'm going to rename this to be my four post Lego. So just type in four post and hit enter. Now right click on the top level, the Lego configuration, and select add configuration. So we're going to add the six post. So for configuration name, I'll type in six post, hit the green check mark. Now my six post configuration is active. So when I come back to my design tree, any changes I make will be applied to that six post. So for instance, under linear pattern one, I want to select it. And with it selected, I find my feature dimension, the four post. So I'll go ahead and click on that four. And when I double click on that four, it takes me to this modify box. Now I want to type a six, but now you'll know something different about this box. This box now has this little icon at the end. So when I click on the arrow, I get the option to apply this change only to this configuration. I can apply it to all configurations that exist, or I can specify which configurations I want this change to apply to. So if I had five configurations, maybe this change only applied to two of them. So I could pick which two it applies to. So I'm going to do this configuration and hit my green check mark. And you'll notice it didn't look like it updated. Go ahead and click on rebuild. And now you'll see the length changed. I've got six posts on the top. I've got five posts on the bottom. I can come over, click on my configuration manager. I can double click on four post. It goes back to four. I double click on six post. It goes to six. So, you know, I could go ahead and repeat this process. So I'll right click on Lego on the top level do add configuration and I'll type in an eight post. Once you get that configuration name entered, hit the green check mark. Now my eight post is active. So I just come over to my design tree and do the exact same thing again. Find my linear pattern. I can edit that feature and I can make the change from in here. I can change it to an eight. And then again, just make sure that this icon is set correctly. So I just wanted to apply to this configuration. Hit the green check mark and you'll see how it updates. I can look at my six post, it still looks right, and my four post looks right. So I'll double click on eight post. One other thing that I could show you about configurations is if for some reason you had some features that applied to one configuration but not to all of them. So let's just say that this eight post, it didn't have any of these bottom posts in it. And so I can still use configurations to achieve that. And so what I'm gonna wanna do is this linear pattern two. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna select configure feature. And when I do that, I wanna suppress this linear pattern only for my eight post. So I'll check that box, hit okay. You'll notice they all go away except for this one. So then I need to repeat that process for that one as well. So I can just click on it in the graphics area. I can right click, select configure feature and then suppress it for the eight post as well. And now I still have my shell, I still have my top posts, I just don't have those inside posts. And this only applied to that eight post. So when I look at my four post, they're back. I look at my six post, they're there, but they're not on my eight post. So hopefully that gets you a good introduction into configurations and hopefully you can uh, find some ways to utilize the information that I've shared with you today. So I look forward to hearing how configurations go. I do really enjoy them. Uh, and then next, I'm going to do a video about uh, design tables and using design tables to, to drive your models as well. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for listening.